people really want to hear when they come to me for a reading, they want to know and they want to be sure that dead is not dead and that they can still see them and hear them and be a part of their lives. No reason to act surprised. I am the Shinigami Ryu. Shinigami. Well, I'm not surprised. In fact, Ryuk, I've been waiting for you. Tell you here to fill out a signature card for a new account. Can I help you? Yes, I'm here to fill out a signature card for a new account. And do you know your account number? 926 31043. 926 31043. 31043. Rita Miller. Who? What? Tell her Rita Miller. Rita Miller. Didn't they have you sign a card when you opened the account? Tell her Carl Bruner opened it for you by phone and asked you to come in today. So you see Carl Bruner, he he opened it for me by phone, that account, and, and now he's asked me to come in today. Hi. Just sign this card on the bottom line, please. down here for my health, you're out of your mind. Sam's dead, okay? He's dead. Tell her I love her. He says he loves you. <sighs> Sam would never say that. Ditto, tell her ditto. That was ditto. Ditto. trying to say at the end he couldn't breathe. Who was this child that is trying to tell me that they're here? I did. Oh, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. They're showing me that when she left for that side, she was young. I don't think she was even five years old. How old was she? She was two. She's trying to make sure you understand that it was her time to go. And there was nothing you did, and there was no choice that you made, and you are not responsible, and she does not want you to feel guilty. seen some on TV, but uh, I never believed that it was real. And the cancer, was it up in this part of her body? Yes. Because here is where she showed me the cancer is all here. My sister passed away of breast cancer, and um, she had mentioned early on that, um, that she's seen something or felt something within the chest. Right now, she's just counting on you to send her love, tell everybody you've heard from her, and the suffering is over. All right. Oh, oh one other thing. Whose name starts with an L? She's telling me I'm, she's with her. Louise. The chances of her annoying or even coming close to um, this person, Louise, which is my cousin, uh, my sister and my cousin were extremely close. That was an uh, experience uh, that I'll never forget for sure. Uh, one other name she mentions is May, M-A-E, is there. Conchetta mentioned the name May, and she actually spelled it out M-A-E, and at the time I had no idea of who she could possibly be talking about. When I went home, I, I talked to my wife about my experience, and she indicated um, her stepmother had recently passed away within the last 12 months, and her middle name was in fact May, M-A-E, and her first name was Annie. And I wanted not to believe, I wanted badly not to believe, but um, as a result, I just could not deny um, that uh, she was right on. Do you 
you or bring you communication from your dear little girl through a medium because that practice has been forbidden. So anybody engaging in that practice is not a good or godly spirit. So get this. So they say to me, then how did that spirit know about the pink teddy bear with the locket in the bottom drawer of my bureau? And they took, my little girl thanked me for that teddy bear and I never gave, never had the chance to give it to her because she died before I could give it to her. Then I know this is real. And I say to them, I know this is horrible. This is how to all these demons are, they, they, they take glee in making you suffer. They know about the pink teddy bear because they saw you buy it. They know where you put it. They know about the locket. They know about the inscription on the back. I said, they are deceiving you. Why are you doing this to me? You hear me? Why are you doing this to me? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. But I may tell her, tell her she's wearing the shirt that I spilled the margarita on and the earrings. But I may, but I may tell her, tell her she's wearing the shirt that I spilled the margarita on and the earrings. Are oh, if Sam says to tell you you're wearing the shirt that you spilled the margarita on and the earrings he gave you for Christmas. Just see, I'm not a fake. Not about this. You came up with names a lot of times. Yeah. Well, that's them. Well, that's them. Well, that's them. They, well, that's them. They, well, that's them. They came up with names. I get the credit for it, but they're really the ones who are so amazing. Oh, you're amazing. That makes me very happy. But if you walk away with anything today, I don't want you to walk away with saying I'm amazing. I want you to walk away saying my family's not dead. And someday we'll all be together again. That's what I want you to walk away with. Oh, thank you. So I got the evening off, and I went out. Uh, we went out and got dinner. He told me, "Hey, I got something fantastic to tell you." He said, "I am affiliated with people that speak with the spirits of the dead. How would you like to talk to this the the spirit of your dead mother?" And I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. He said, you wouldn't be uh, afraid of talking to, to the spirit of your dead mother, would you? Well, I said, I'll tell you what, I would have to give that some thought, because it's something I never thought about before in my life. Most of us probably haven't, a little afraid of something like that. Well, he said, you know, you know, it's written all over your face. You're afraid of, of going to a seance. But he says, I know you, he said, you're going to come. And uh, then he started to tell me how brave I was. When he says, you're not the same man, you've changed. You're chicken. That's all I needed to hear. I said, when do we go to a seance? Health place? No. Okay. I, I'm not saying that's where you should work, but you might want to go back to school. Have you thought of that? Yes. I, think, I feel you need to go back to school. And who is Catherine or Anne? Who is Catherine? That was a friend of mine. Did she pass away? Yes. At a young age? Yes. Okay, so she didn't grow to be an old person. No. Her spirit is with you. She wants you to know she knows how much you miss her. And you did something recently that reminded you of her. You either found something that she gave you or you did something recently, saw a picture. What did you do? She's telling me, she's telling me, she's telling me, she's telling me, she's telling me. You just did something that reminded you of her. I've been thinking about her sister a lot. We, she was murdered when she was 14. And we'd all thought that um, Ted Bundy had done it, and that was the current, um, that was what everyone thought until they found the... They found the real guy, right? Yeah, he's in prison right now. Right. It, she wants her family to know she's at peace. See, there is a spirit world, everybody, and, you know, you're not going to really know until you get over there, but I promise you, there's a spirit world. And I feel that she, since they found the murderer, she is at peace. And they need, to know, they need to know this. And she's telling me about William. <laughs> that was the man that killed her. Yeah, she's saying she, that William will get his. What goes around comes around. William will get his. And it's... Um, there's a sign. She comes as a sign. Do you see signs and you think, oh, that's her? 
Did she give you an owl or a bird? Did she give you an owl or a bird? <laughs> I was in the hospital once when we were 12 and she came to visit me and I still have a little a bird she gave you? No, it was a little it was a little booklet that she made so people could sign it. She drew an owl on the front of it. Okay. That is her sign to you that she wants you to know that she watches over you. How did that spirit know? Anyway, your friend wants you to know that she's at peace and I got to go. So thank you for, I'm sorry I didn't read for other people, but you guys, thank you so much for trusting me. And just know your friend is at peace. Tell her family. What the do you think? The spirits know. What do you think? <laughs> I'm in shock. <laughs> I, I mean, I felt Kathy around me a lot, and I, it was, there's a song that makes me think of her every time. And I drive by her house, and you know, I miss her. We were best friends until she disappeared one day hitchhiking on Aurora. The one well, thing I can you. promise you thank is, you. when it is your time, many years from now, to go to the spirit world, when they talk about the white light and seeing our loved ones again, she'll be there waiting for you. Thank you so much. Shar, thank, thank you. Thank if you. you're interested you. in a reading from Shar, she's doing a small group reading tonight at the downtown Seattle Marriott starting at 6.30 p.m. And it amazes me because all of a sudden, you know, only Bill would have known that. It's amazing. Nope. The spirits that were around Bill that are familiar with him intimately knew that, too. And now that demon is communicating back to the demon that's in the psyche. It's a demon hotline. Not a psychic hotline. You have two demons communicating back with each other what the other person is doing. Their belief, popular belief of necromancy, is to conjure the spirits of the dead. So that you can speak with someone who has practiced right. the seance that you originally went to mm -hmm. was the practice of necromancy. Yeah. Now, the priest says that the su this super deception is brought about in only one way. Through the deceptive belief that man has an immortal soul that lives on after death. And he said that constitutes idol idolatry through necromancy. So he says there are hundreds of millions of Christians that are practicing idolatry. What do you think? They're glorifying God. See? Because he, they believe that the soul is immortal. Yeah. They may not be talking to the yeah. supposed spirits of the dead. Yeah. Contrary to popular belief. Necromancy does not consist of conjuring the spirits of the dead. The reason being that man is totally mortal and does not possess an immortal soul. So who are they talking to? He says the friendly demon spirits that have always found over the centuries great delight in impersonating apparitions, departed loved ones, and persons of great renown. Necromancy is in reality a belief, a religious belief. People believe that the dead have entered into a higher state of existence than they had when they were alive. Also that they are in a position and have the capacity to help the living here on earth. See? Then he said, is, he says this is where things get really interesting. He said, according to the great master, a person does not have to supposedly call upon the spirits of the dead to receive help, you see, to be involved in necromancy. All he needs to do is to believe in life after death. Because he said, necromancy is the belief that man is human, uh, as a human being, as an uh, immortal soul. So anybody that believes that man has an immortal soul is involved in necromancy. It's that simple. By people believing that they are either talking to the saints, see, the spirits of the dead, dead saints, or a dead relative, or a dead person of some type, when people believe in this business, they are actually opening themselves to be completely deceived by demon spirits. Because it gives the demon spirits an opportunity to impersonate the dead. See? And for people to believe their lives. And the priest says that thrills the... It, first of all, it says it brings the great master the respect and the reverence that is due to his great name. And it makes all the other spirits exceedingly happy because they are the ones that have worked to lead people to believe in life after death. See? And 
every choice. Your mother is with other people, lots of them. Tells me that she's so proud of you. She said something about a car. Did you just get a car? You did. She said, good luck with the car, baby. She saw you there. She's telling me she's in the car.